Hello, and welcome to the Setting Trick Podcast. I'm your host, John McAllister. Today, I am excited to feature our longtime intern, one of the co-founders and co-presidents of the Youth Bridge Association, our very own Michael Hsu. In August of last year, the Youth Bridge Association started teaching complete beginners bridge. And Michael speaks of the role of mentors in each of his co-founders' bridge playing lives. And all four of these kids are products of Silicon Valley Youth Bridge. And they saw that there was a need, uh, a demand for teaching. And they stepped up and they're doing it. And so that's part of what this podcast is about is featuring people that are taking action to introduce Bridge to a new generation of players. Note, this conversation took place on December 10th and today is April 8th. So yes, it took us a little while to get it published and we'll have a update on the YBA in the outro. Yeah, we're recording, babe. We don't want to miss any of the good stuff. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about this conversation. Well, you're doing good stuff in the uh, world of Youth Bridge, so I'm excited to have you on here. Yeah, thank you for that. And it does mean a lot to me for you to say that because it's something that I care a lot about. So it's not just uh, one thought that I had when I saw this YBA, and I know you're a senior in high school. You got this YBA. I'm like, is this just something you're doing to have on your college, on your resume for colleges? Right. I, I feel really strongly about this. The idea of community service for the sake of getting community service hours or one that is, it, it actually disgusts me completely. If you look at what I've been volunteering for, the only thing I've been volunteering for is bridge. I don't go build houses in like Columbia or something, right? Like, so, so the YBA, well, the reason why we started at this time, the big reason why is because of COVID. So, so everything got canceled. So I got a shit ton of time that I didn't have before that I wouldn't have. Uh, so that's why the YBA was founded when I'm a senior. So I, I definitely understand that college admission officers would look at what I'm doing with YBA favorably. But that's not my point. Like the YBA, I'm, I'm going to continue working on the YBA long after I'm in college and, and like the admission process is over. I, I have pride in my work. And it just disgusts me to do something uh, for somebody else in the sense like for somebody else's evaluation. I'm not doing this for an admission officer to check off on his like checklist. Oh, this guy showed leadership. Oh, he, he showed commitment. Oh, check. He showed community service. Yeah, like I'm, I'm not doing it for that. I'm doing it for Youth Bridge. So the YBA is, uh, that's, it's Youth Bridge Association. And this is something that you and... Michael One, Michael Who, Michael uh, Two, mm-hmm. Arthur Zhu, and Jonathan Yu all started. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Arthur Zhu, Michael Who, and Jonathan Yu. Yeah. How did it happen? What what's, what are you guys doing? Yeah, so all of us, we are all from Civi actually, and so we all had a very strong connection with having past mentors that really helped us in our journey in playing bridge. And so we all are really grateful for everything that has been given to us. And with me, it's especially with the Rosenbergs and, and what Sibby has done for me. And so we, we thought to ourselves, oh, we're stuck at home. We have a lot of time. Let's go do something productive, right? Let's, let's go give back to, to the community that's given so much to us. And our, the idea here was just YBA. Like the Youth Bridge Association, that concept is not something new, right? It's not, it's not like we, we came up with the idea of uh, youth players promoting youth bridge. Like that idea has been around, right? Like that's just, that's an idea, but we just decided that we were going to capitalize on the idea and and actually do it and be the ones initiating the student-led organization. So you started in the spring or maybe it was the summer you had your first, or was it even in the fall that you had your first classes? When Mm -hmm. did you have your first classes? I'm not too certain. But I do know that we began working on our website and everything during the summer. And 
I know that we had classes in August. Mm -hmm. time. Our first class was in August. And how many kids did you get for the first class? We got around 30 students for the beginner bridge class, which was really nice. And were they from mostly people that you all knew personally or were they from all over the world? Where did, where were these kids coming from? Yeah, they, 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 we actually had a lot of Canadians and I was really surprised. Um, like, like probably one third of them were Canadians and uh, none of us are Canadians. And I think apparently some Canadian moms on on their WeChat group spread the news about our organization. And that's how we got a lot of Canadians to come. These are all like begin like these are people who never actually played bridge before. So we didn't know them. And they weren't like they weren't our cousins or siblings or whatnot. They were people all over the world. And what's the teaching format? Uh, what we do is we go on Zoom. Uh, we have a lecture with uh, using Google Slides. And then after that, we go into breakout rooms to practice the lesson taught. And in each breakout room, we try to have one youth teacher in the breakout room mentoring the four, stu four students at their table. And we, we play on Bridge Base Online. And yeah, and that's why it's really important for us to have a lot of help from other youth bridge players who, who already learned bridge and and it's willing to make the time to help mentor other youth spiritually. What was the first lesson or what was one of the early lessons that you remember? Well, so we talked about what we need to open one of them. And how did you decide on that as a, as a lesson topic? Well, that, that was actually later, right? We first began with declaring skills on how to take tricks in no Trump, how to take tricks in Trump. And, Eventually, we we have to provide like a like to to really start bidding. Well, like we have to establish things, right? And by establishing the no Trump range and what hands bid no Trump, that that makes other bidding options logical, right? Like now, if it goes to club, a spade, one no. If you know what one no Trump means, you could guess, or you could infer, you could understand logically why the rebid of one no Trump shows what it does. So what's the dropout rate? <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure. I, I don't pay too much attention to the data sheet, but we, we do definitely have dropout and that's expected. But we also do have very good uh, retention rate from from our first beginner bridge class. After the first lesson, a few dropped out, but, but we still kept the large uh, majority of the 30 students that initially came after we finished our beginner bridge class and we did our intermediate intermediate bridge class, we kept like about like 80%, like 90% of the students that stick with us through our beginner bridge class. So we're pretty happy with our retention rate. But I mean, we know that we, there's more, we can improve our teaching. There's a lot to improve, but we are pretty happy with our retention rate. And how often are you guys meeting or where are you meeting? I know you've got a big tournament coming up next week. Well, among us co-founders, we... We meet every Wednesday for about an hour or two on Facebook Messenger call. And with the students, we, we have lessons every Saturday. So we we come teach at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the intermediate bridge class. We also have a beginner bridge class, which is 1.30 Pacific Time. What's the, so like the there's a tournament. When's the tournament? Mm, so the uh, youth, the first Youth Bridge Association Grand Online Tournament, it's on December or yeah, it's on December nineteenth. It was just a Saturday, so we have an opening ceremony at twelve thirty to one o'clock p.m. And then after that, the actual tournament starts at one, and it lasts all the way to three thirty. And after three thirty, we have our closing ceremony. What is the opening ceremony and closing ceremony going to look like? In the opening ceremony, we will help people who don't have partners to find a partner. And we will also talk about ethics and cheating and, and why it's important to not do that. We also like have fun trivia for, for people to enjoy while they wait for the tournament to begin. And yeah, so it's just like a way to touch base and, and make sure everybody knows what's happening. And if they have any questions, they can ask. Like maybe they don't know how to register for a tournament. And the closing ceremony, 
we will like announce winners, give out prizes, and conduct their raffle. And is there going to be a Zoom when when their people are playing? Are they going to be zooming with their screenmates, or is it just going to be just on BridgeBase? It would just be on BridgeBase. Hey, do you think that there's a chance that, like, what have you gotten entries beforehand already? Like, are you starting to get entries for, before for the for the events? Oh, people uh, started you, signing up for the tournament. Yeah, yeah, we are getting a, a very good amount of people uh, coming to sign up. Right, so far we have sixty people, more than sixty uh, youth players signing up from. I believe since the last time I checked, from about eight countries who have signed up for tournament. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Do you think there's a chance any of your YBA prodigy proteges are gonna are gonna be able to medal in the? Uh, isn't there like there's different classifications of the? Of, are there different classifications of the events? I should know this. I'm sorry. I can't, I'm asking too many questions. No, no, no. Sorry. No, our tournament is stratified. We have a lower stratification and the upper stratification. And for our lower stratification. It's for people with less than one year of playing experience. You know, I, I do think that some of our students from our classes are, have, show, have shown a lot of potential and definitely can take home first or second, third. Yeah. And, I mean, 60, where, who, who are all these? Uh, who are all, you're not playing in the event, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Is Vin playing? Oh. Uh, uh, he, he won't be allowed to because we, we have limited the event to players who can't be on the on their country's national team. Yeah, but based on feedback, we actually maybe in the future plan on making another stratification that will allow these top flight junior players to play. Yeah, so we we do accept, we do appreciate all feedback, and we're listening to them and thinking about how to incorporate them. And in the stratifications, are they just going to be so the play, people with less than one year are all going to be playing against themselves? Yes, I'm impressed, man. I think this is really you know like civvies really it it makes me happy that civvy exists because you guys are pumping out you know really getting people into the game these young people and then you're not only that but now you're paying it forward with doing this YBA and. And it's something it, it, like I, the reason this podcast even exists is because of my desire to like to make a movie about bridge, about young showcasing young people. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited to have you, I mean, doing what you're doing because there that you can't replace that, you know, like adults, it's a different thing. Adults teaching kids versus kids teaching kids. Yeah, and exactly. I'm really proud of you. I'm really, uh, I'm really proud that you're that you're taking this on and you're you're doing seemingly doing a a great job of it. Like you're reaching out to Barbara Clark, Patty Tucker. I both of them forwarded me your email. I, I mean, I don't know how many how many how many people did you email directly about the grand online tournament? I'm not too sure. I I tried to go find big uh, youth bridge organizations I have heard of. Like I've contacted the Bermuda Island kids. I just tried, yeah, like we've contacted Seattle, uh, Seattle Next Generation. And yeah, so we just tried to contact these large youth bridge organizations and tell them about our event. I'm psyched, man. I mean, it's, uh, you know, like we talked about this with Michael Rosenberg when I originally was trying to ask him to be on the show. (laughs) He thought that I was saying that. I was suggesting, wanting his opinion on whether or not I should invite you to be on the show. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, Michael Rosenberg is, uh, he's hes your mentor. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, like he's, what he's doing with the junior program, he gives his time very generously. You know, I think, I bet he's really proud of, uh, I bet he's really proud of what you're, what you're doing. Yeah, it, it does mean a lot to me to try to give back for everything that Michael Rosenberg has done for me. And I, I really appreciate just like everything that's done to me, done for me. And I think the best way I could really pay it, pay it back is just by paying it forward, by doing what I can do to help promote Youth Bridge. And yeah, so the thing about the Youth Bridge Association is I also want it to be like a a way for youth, other Youth Bridge players to help contribute in the fight for Youth Bridge. Like it's a bit hard sometimes for, for somebody to, to try to go go help out in the community if you're not so sure where to go or what to do. 
And I, I really want my organization to be a way of connecting youth bridge players around the world and to like just help them take on the fight themselves and to support them as they start uh, bridge clubs at their school or, or yeah, or like just allowing them to, um, or just providing some classes for some students for them to mentor and just give back to the community that has given so much to us. Like if you think about COVID and all the negatives about COVID, it's easy to to come up with a, with a long list. But I think that this program is an example of the one of the huge positives to come out of COVID is the just how virtual, how connected we can be virtually, and how this you know this this organization really is a result of of a virtual initiative, and it, and I think it's it's like I can see it really being far reaching based on your intention. Yeah, we really do hope to be able to connect, not just the Bay Area or just California or just America. Like we really hope that our organization can extend beyond just our space, our, our like physical space and just be an organization for youth bridge in general. And so like, for, so just youth bridge players all around the world in different countries. What do your parents say about this? Oh, my parents, they're not bridge players. And I guess they don't say much about it. I don't really let my parents decide <laughs> what I do in terms of my community service, right? Like if they want me to volunteer for like a, or for something that I, I can't find passion, in, I, I just can't do it. So yeah, so like they haven't really been, my parents, like they, they haven't experienced the same things I have with youth bridge, right? Like, it's like for me, I I just feel so much gratitude to, to the opportunities that I've been given through like, the U.S. Uh, United States Bridge Federation Junior Training Program through Michael Rosenberg through through City, and so yeah, so the this organization is really my way to to give back to the community, and my parents aren't so much involved in this. Are you being recruited by any collegiate bridge programs? I, I wish. <laughs> I, I really wish colleges would like <laughs> would do. Like would do what they do with like basketball and, and they do it for bridge. It's like if you're a good bridge player, they go up, they come recruit you and it's like they give you scholarships to come play at their college. Um but no, no, I, I haven't been recruited myself. Like yeah, like colleges don't have like official collegiate bridge teams in the sense that like the school makes money off of them. But yeah, like I, I've been trying to contact professors that at colleges that play bridge and and to see what like just like if they have any advice for me to apply to these colleges because i want to start a youth bridge program i mean a collegiate bridge program at my alma mater mm -hmm. the university of virginia mm -hmm. and we would love to have you come here <laughs> but you're gonna be starting from scratch <laughs> right now there's one collegiate bridge play there's one person who is a grad student who played on her college team at trine university but she's the only person that the acbl has on record in the student body as being a bridge player <laughs> oh that, that's tough yeah like whichever college i end up going to i i definitely will will, will try to make a a bridge club that exists not only when I'm there, but will exist, continue to exist uh, long after I leave. So that's one of my goals in colleges is to, to, to start a bridge club or make it stronger than before. And your first choice is Harvard? Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Harvard is definitely a dream school of mine. But like, of course, like there's so many, there's a lot of very good schools and, and Harvard it's very, it's very difficult to get into Harvard, of course. I, I definitely can't expect to get in. But yeah, like Har Harvard, I, I, I do think Harvard will be a great university to go to. Where is Michael One want to go to school? Michael One. Oh, well, <laughs> Michael One wants to go to Harvard because Michael One is... <laughs> I, I don't think our listeners know about this, about this joke. I, I don't think they know about this joke. I don't even know how you know about this joke. John, Steve you... Weinstein told me. So Steve Weinstein comes out and plays, coaches a, a woman who lives in Michael's area. And I think they get some of the, Michael and some of his other fellow junior friends to come play again with and against them. And 
my understanding of the story, and this is Steve hasn't said this to me, but this is what I understand. So there's another junior one. Of, so Michael, who is also a civvy kid, he's also one of the founders of the YBA, mm-hmm. and he's a he's been on a bronze medal. T- you guys won the bronze medal, is that right? Yep, we were teammates. At, um, they won yeah. the bronze medal in the uh, kids division mm-hmm. of the Junior World Championships of Bridge, and. So his name is Michael who <laughs> and your name is Michael. How do you, is your last name Zhu? You say Zhu? It, it's uh, Xu, but like uh, English is just Zhu. <laughs> so Zhu, so it's Michael who and Michael Zhu. <laughs> and my guess is that Weinstein, it, that was just too close for him. <laughs> and so he started calling them Michael who Michael one and Michael Zhu, Michael two, maybe because, but they both rhyme with two, so I don't know. How, <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how this. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this is my guessing, my best guess. You tell me. Yeah. So, like, uh, among us junior players, we we of course have friendly competition, right? And we want to be we want to be the best Michael there is, right? <laughs> uh, which is going to be very hard because I have to go up against Michael Rosenberg, like so many good Michaels. It was like, well, who's Michael one and who's Michael two? Well, Michael Rosenberg is zero. He's Michael zero. He, he, he's above all. So, um, and like, yeah, so it's just like, a, it's a meme. It's become a meme, really. Like, who's who's one and who's two? And it's not really so much where we are right now, but who will become later, right? Like, so whoever's one or two right now, that doesn't mean it will be that way in the future. Like, it's just all about, like, focusing on yourself and becoming the best, best player you could be. So you're saying that it's not clear that you're Michael two and he's Michael one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we haven't seen each other play in a long time. And of course we also improve at different rates and at any different times. Like the rates change too, right? Sometimes we're busy. We're like, we hit a busy time in our lives and we can't really devote as much time to practicing. But I mean, Michael, who's a great friend of mine and, and I, I'm really happy whenever he uh, finds success at the bridge table. I remember when I first started playing bridge, like I looked up to him as, as a, a sort of role model in the sense that he's already experienced some success in youth bridge. And, and so I put him as my target to try to, to be right, to, to be as level. And then once I'm at level, then I could go on and continue my growth. But yeah, so there's like a lot of friendly competition among juniors because we all want to be uh, the best, right? We, we all, we all want to, to be the best bridge player ever. Are you and Michael, who on the same junior team for the no no we we are both on the u.s national team so uh there are two u.s national teams he's on usa too yeah yeah i i have finn finn's too strong <laughs> of course i'll be u.s you can't be you can't be usa too if you have finn on your team how did you and finn become partners for the usa team trials well this is a interesting story originally I was going to play with somebody else and Finn was going to play with somebody else. But then there was drama, right? You know, we're, we're still very young. Uh, we're still teenagers. We still have, as I described in the Bridge Winner post a few years ago, we still have raging hormones in our bodies. And so basically, like, there was some drama where, where like, some people might, might, might not have been most kind and and nobody was willing to be the, the bigger man and, like, step up and apologize and so there was a lot of drama and and everybody on my team does kind of have strong personality but but Finn and I we get along pretty well we get we get along personally very well and and our teammates do too so we decided that this will be the best orientation yeah because like we believe that it's important to trust and love your partner and to really respect them because if you don't it it just becomes toxic. And even if you're the better player, if you two are the better players on paper, if you guys don't, if you guys, if you guys just like start tilting each other, it's it's not good. So yeah, Finn and I, we get along very well. And so that's why we decided to be partners. Who do you think's the favorite in the uh, under 20s? Ooh, I, I wouldn't know because I don't really know the, the state of uh, youth bridge in other countries. But I, I'm confident in our ability to medal. Uh, and I know that after college applications, I, I will like, I'm, I'm going to try to become another thing for Nestle. 
when I interviewed him for the show, he was saying that it, it sounded like he, I mean, he didn't come out and say it, but he said that you it sounded like you, you were busy doing other things uh, while he was more focused on bridge at the time. Yeah. Yeah. We, we are kind of different in our future goals. I'm not so sure I would want to be a bridge professional. And, and so I, I'm focused on school too, getting good grades, you know, trying to get into top schools. So yeah, but like once, I mean, second semester, senior year, and all this bullshit, it's all over. I, I, I will be able to play a lot more online tournaments and, and really start, you know, building up my bridge game at, at, at the fast rate. So like some people who follow the show will know that you're our intern. You do the research, you do the initial research on our guests. Mm-hmm. You write up the show highlights. What, as far as being an intern, what are the benefits of being, you know, how many girls are coming up to you being like, oh my God, you're Michael Zhu from the setting trip. Like, is it just overwhelming? Uh, tell us about that. Oh my God. You really did ask that question, J-Mac. You really did. Cause it's uh, true. You don't want to talk about it. You don't want, you don't want the word to get out. What? You don't want the word to, you don't want people to know, you know, like you want to keep it on the down low, we say. You don't want people to know what a, the position that you're in, all the, all the inquiries you're receiving, all the DMs you're getting. Well, well uh, to answer your question, I, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, I do have romantic interests, but unfortunately, I don't think like my crushes know that I'm an intern for the setting trick. But, but you know what? Now that you said, now that you asked this, I might like try to get Ben Condes like to be a wee man for me, like for him to go DM, DM one of my crushes and be like, "Hey, there's this awesome dude named Michael Shu. He's he's the prestigious intern for the setting trick. You should totally go date him." <laughs> I might have to do that now. So your crushes don't even know that you're that you exist. Oh no, no, they do. Like it's just like I mean. I guess if they're not really in the bridge world, they might not really know about the sudden mm-hmm. trick and stuff. So you have some crushes that are not in the bridge world? Yeah, yeah basically. You're so cute, man. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, let me, I mean, let me say, so I was in Las Vegas and at the Las Vegas NABC summer of 2019. And it was like, a, there was a two day pair, pair game starting. And mm-hmm. Michael, you texted me, I think that morning, that morning? looking to play. <laughs> yeah. And I was so excited because I was going to go, I wanted to find a game uh-huh. and I get this text from you, you know, you're really good. And it was really Thank cool to that. get, I mean, not, and not in addition to you just being a good player, but I mean, I knew that you, I, I didn't, I hadn't played with you before, but that I knew you would be good because you're in the junior program. You know, you were on the team that won the bronze, like you had to be good. So, I mean, it was a really <laughs> pleasant surprise to get that text and it was a lot of fun to play with you. And we got to the second day, which was nice. Mm-hmm. And I think you, uh, I admire how you carry yourself. Thank you. It's something that like how I carry myself. It's something I know that I'm not a perfect human being and that, there's things that I do that I shouldn't do. I I, I always try to be better than who I was before. I, I, I'm happy that you you said that I that I was a good bridge player, but I, I think that I'm not complete yet in my growth as a bridge player, and I, I really want to be better than to be uh, substantially better than I was before. You remember that one hand where I put you in uh, six spades, six diamonds, six diamonds. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> That was a ridiculous hand. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I had like seven diamonds, and you had you had two diamonds, and and like you had eighteen six of hearts and a stiff heart, and we need the hearts three three diamonds uh two two, and like and for them to like maybe not lead a club or something, and <laughs> to force six diamonds to make, and, and it, it happened. And then uh, they called the director because I, I hesitated. Apparently, I hesitated too long when I was thinking about whether I should, um, like, continue trying for no trump or, or just stick in the five minor. No, I, 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 that's not the one that I was talking about. I'm talking oh, about her? the one where the junior on your right falls carded. 
Oh, that one. Yes, Ethan Wood. I still remember that. I forgot exactly what the state situation was, but he had um, Sif King offside. Yeah, yeah. Queen Jack 10 fifth offset ace nine eight fifth. Yeah, and he he played the King of Diamonds and to not show his Queen of Diamond on there. And and so when I counted up the points, I was like, or, or I, I hope for him to have the Sif King, but it turns out he didn't. So I, I played for the drop instead of the finesse because I, I trusted his boss card. And I counted the points, and I was like, well, he must have the king for his opening bid. So yeah, that was not good. So how many boards are you playing in the in the YBA event? Mm, we haven't uh, completely finalized the details on that yet, but we know that we want it to last around from about two and a half hours. Tell me about the work you're doing for Samantha Punch. Ooh, you, you know, like, when you try to convince people to come play bridge, like it's a bit hard sometimes. It was like, I mean, besides saying stuff like it was the greatest game in the world, or like Bill Gates play it, or uh, it's really hard to convince people to come play bridge. And so when I found out about Samantha Punch's research in the field of sociology of bridge, to like try to find benefits of playing bridge, I, I got really excited because I was like, hey, if uh, I could come come help her out in this research find ways to like explain the benefits of bridge. Uh, so I reached out to her, contacted her, and I'm now doing research for uh, bridge and mind sport for all. I actually found out about her research through you, John, like through the setting trick when you guys interviewed her. <laughs> Set of guests. What kind of research are you doing? Right now we are looking at cheating and the Sylvia Shi self, uh, self convention post. And um, so so we actually are looking at all the comments made by Bridge Winner. We're stalking their comments <laughs> and we're looking at them, we're analyzing them. And, and we're trying to like find things that emerge from, from all these comments, like how to prevent cheating, how to detect it, how to punish it, stuff like that. I hope I didn't say too much about that. I'm pretty sure she doesn't mind me telling people that about that. <laughs> you mean Sam? Yeah. I, I, I don't think there should be a problem with that. At least I'd like to have Sylvia on. The, I I told you I'd like to have Sylvia on the show and and ask her like what she was doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so this is my personal belief, and I, I believe that people should get second chances. And it's like as bad as what she did, like it's horrible. But but I think at least personally, I'm not gonna say what other people should do. I'm just going to say that for me personally, I believe in second chances a lot. And and so I, I really hope that Sylvia can redeem herself. And I think maybe one way she can do that is if she comes and, and explains some things on the setting trip. When I heard your suggestion about interviewing her, I was like, J-Mac, you're about to get canceled. But like, <laughs> I was like, I, I, but yeah, no, I, I do think that this idea worth thinking about. And I'm all for you for doing that. You have my support. So our listeners might not know, you email Michael Rosenberg mm -hmm. pretty regularly mm -hmm. about bridge questions. Mm -hmm. He when you talk about him being your mentor, like you're not you're it's not a joke. Like he's told me that this was a, a couple of years ago that he'd received over five thousand emails from <laughs> <you>. <laughs> 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 How many times have you emailed Michael Rosenberg today? Oh, okay. So I, I love talking about my relationship with Michael Rosenberg. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. So, so right now he's doing the online rules series on bridge winners. So yeah. he's very busy with all that. And and like of course, I'm pretty, and I recognize this and I acknowledge this. I'm pretty insane with the amount of questions I ask. Right. So so uh, he's asked me to limit. The number of emails I sent him, which, which I completely understand. Like, it, it's, it's still amazement what he's willing, like, it's still amazing that he's willing to receive emails from me, and like, given the stuff I do to him, <laughs> all the questions asked. Oh my god, yeah. So, so today I haven't sent him any emails, but I, I did send him one yesterday. And what was the topic of the email yesterday? It's like I find the hand where I had the problem where I'm not sure, and I ask him. What, what he thinks about it. And did he respond? Uh, I'm not so sure yet. I, I, I think so. But I'm not, yeah, I, I think he did respond. 
I, I, yeah, I think I have to go view his response and give him more questions to chew on. Did you get it right at the table? That one? Well, it's not so much about like what's okay. So, so the thing about me is I like to imagine slight changes to hand. Like, it, even if on a certain hand I didn't have a problem, I would like to imagine how the cards could change a little bit to give me a problem. So, like, sometimes the questions I ask, like, I didn't even have a problem, right, in real, in real life. But, I like, I still ask them because there's still an area of uncertainty. So, like, to answer your question, like, no, because I actually didn't experience the problem in real life. I just imagined, like, I, that I could, like, if you preempted three states instead of two states, now I feel like I have a problem here, right? Like, so what I do here, and I ask Michael open. <laughs> 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 yeah so like it, like i'm not i not only ask questions about things that happened in real life that i'm not sure about i also go i also then like purposefully try to imagine ways that I could have problems and I ask i ask questions about those so so that that kind of help explains why i send like thousands of emails to michael Rosenberg. When you when you're sending this volume of emails, like has all just sense of sort of formality gone out the window, and it's just like, like do you say, do you still say hi, Michael? You know, like do you explain the problem? How much fluff is there in these emails? Yeah, so I begin every email with hi, Michael, and I end it every one with thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, and but like thanks comma michael right so, like, yeah <laughs> i know it's funny i know I, 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 I thought yeah i thought that was funny uh, so yeah so like i i don't have a lot of fluff because like, it's just not practical and we have our own language but or at least i say stuff to him to ex express ideas when we're talking about slam right like whether we, whether we should do slam uh, there's a factor of having enough tricks and also having enough controls. And I like to call like the question of the aspect of having enough tricks as having meat, right? Like I, I use that word like meat to describe uh, oh, the South have the uh, meat uh, to be slam here. <laughs> and, and like another thing that I use with him is like the Kevin test. Kevin Rosenberg is his son. And and like I, I like the way of how he bids, or or like I use him as the model for what is standard bidding. I ask according to this Kevin test, is the meaning of three of Trump here as non-serious standard? Like so, basically, I'm asking if I was playing with Kevin, would I be able to ex expect him to believe that three of Trump here is non-serious? And you, but you asked that question of Michael. Yeah. How did how did Kevin become the standard? even though he's not even the one who's the question is being asked of. Kevin, I'm very fortunate to have Kevin uh, agree to play with me a lot of times. And so I played with him quite a bit. And he and I, we, we play like Rosenberg standard. There's a way that Rosenbergs play bridge, like certain conventions that they like. And, you know, like I, I've been brought up on the Rosenberg style of bridge. So like I just use Kevin Rosenberg because he's a Rosenberg. I do find myself liking what Kevin does a lot. Yeah, I'm fortunate. I've been, I played uh, the NAOBC with Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> Understatement. He's good at bridge. How often do you get to play with Michael? So, one of Michael's rules is that he doesn't play with non clients because it wouldn't be fair uh, to his clients if he does that. So, I, I actually have um, only played with him in training sessions. And, like, these are not ever for big events. My, my dream, my hope, one of my bridge dreams is that later in the future, like when I become a, a very good player, so like I'm not, a, I wouldn't be considered client. Like I, I'll be considered like maybe a Zia Mahmood, right? Then, then he would, <laughs> then he would play with me uh, because like he's playing with me because not because like I'm a client, but because I'm a good player that he wants to win with. And I hope to like play with him like a Bermuda Bowl and win win a Bermuda Bowl with him because you know he, he's he's an absolute inspiration he is my favorite person in the entire bridge world what is it about him that makes you say that like that makes you that why, why is he your favorite person in the bridge world he's just amazing when he answers my questions he 
he really he answers them really well. He, he's a good teacher, and and the thing like I I, I just feel so grateful for him because I, I am aware of massive amounts of amount of time and effort he spent on me in answering all these emails, and I really appreciate that so much. Like it's unbelievable. I really appreciate that, and that's why I I really I really love him for that. Like it's it means a lot to me that he would be willing to to spread his joy about the game to me and to to allow me to enjoy the game at a deeper level, uh, to allow me to enjoy the uh, like intellectual mysteries of the game. It's not just email. Like if one of the favorite things about him is like when I post mort- Morton with him in real life, like just the way his eyes will sparkle when we're discussing something interesting, like <laughs> it's so, it's, it's so like his passion, his, his exuberance, <laughs> doing it. like it's so apparent that actually reminds me of something like uh, I, this actually reminds me of uh so when i asked him to when i e- emailed him to write me a recommendation letter for college uh, I, I asked kevin to proofread it if i said anything inappropriate kevin said that uh it, it sounded like i was trying to date his dad <laughs> 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 I, I read I read my email I read my draft I was like oh shit he's right <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I was like you know what you know what uh, you know I'm not gonna change it because it's just he deserves it you know he, he deserves to uh, to know that I think uh, highly of him that I, I really think He's special. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Are you willing? To, are you willing to share that uh, that email with the <laughs> setting <laughs> trick on? <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. Um, <laughs> I don't think I said anything incriminating in that email. So, so yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know if I'm willing to uh, share that email, <laughs> that juicy email. I love that the way his eyes will sparkle when he tells you something. Yeah, it, it's man. such a good sight. Like, it, it's so ple- pleasant. <laughs> you probably don't get to see him as much. I, I get maybe you see him in like junior training, you see him in the Zoom or, or wherever you guys are doing your Zoom. Oh, no, no. Um, r- right now, my group mentor is Adam Grosak, and he's an amazing mentor. And I'm, I'm really lucky to be able to like chat with him without hands on, on Google Hangout. I haven't been able to like uh, talk with Michael on like face to face or or at least like in the video call, but I I, I have it. I still have been emailing him pretty frequently about this thing. Tell me more about Adam Grossack. I'm not the best person to say things about him because I, I I don't know him as well as I uh, um as like somebody like Finn or Harrison knows. Like for me, it's the Rosenbergs and a few others that 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 are like. I have very strong relationships with. Adam's definitely been trained by Michael. I think it's fair to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he has. <laughs> it's a pretty fine, funny dynamic. It's like we sometimes like would argue about what Michael would do in a situation. <laughs> I, I, I'm like Michael Rosenberg's new protege, if you will. But uh, Adam, yeah, but Adam was his protege uh, in the back then. Yeah. Or at least I think that's what the case was. I'm not so sure, to be honest. It amuses me that Michael and Zach Grossack play together now. Yeah, that, that also, I don't know why, but I also find that pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your school like? You're, uh, you're doing school virtually? It's like, you know, I, I, I just go get A's and stuff. It's not something that I, I'm really interested in because, you know, I, I mean, I do it, like, it's not that I don't do it. Like I, I, I do care about it. I do try to be my best in school, but yeah, so I, I really just don't care enough about school to talk about. Do you think that'll be different in college? Probably because um, at college, I, I hope to get into a top university uh, so that I could be surrounded by academic superstars. And I, I think at college, now that I'll be like specializing my education and really focusing on something, and when I do that. I will now actually be able to use my education to actually impact the world, right? Then I think I will really make that a forefront of my life. 
like right now I, I'm just doing what I can do for school. Like I'm I'm getting the A's. It might sound like I'm a bridge bum and I don't do school, but the truth is I do do school. I could prioritize it more and I probably will prior, prioritize it more in college. What's it like being Finn's partner to see him go on, setting on the world on fire like he, like he, like he has in the last year? Yeah. So, so now that I really think about it, it's pretty amazing that I'm playing with Finn. Like, like I, I have thought of that before, but it's like now, now it's really starting to hit that I'm playing with probably the world's mo- most famous junior. Um, is my guest, and or bridge playing junior. As as I told you, like among the juniors. We're all very competitive, right? And we all want to be the best. And I'm I'm extremely happy about the success that Finn has. It's like to see somebody uh, younger than me go out there and challenge these established great old bridge players and, and to have success doing that signals to me that even though um, I might not be that old or like I might not have that much experience, I, I can still go and and find a lot of success in bridge. I, I want to be like where Finn is in bridge. And, and, and I'm also happy for him for, for what he, for the success he's experienced because I'm, I'm also very competitive, right? I, I obviously also want to also be at the level where he is. And, and that's what I'm also focusing on is to be where Finn is right now and to be the next Finn. So you started playing at the, at a civvy, you went to a civvy pizza party. What were the circumstances around that? So my mom learned from like a WeChat group about the civvy pizza party event. And it, it was Sunday and I, I really didn't want to go, right? Because in, in my mind, I had a uh, perception that Bridge was like a stupid little card game, right? It was it was bad. But but then I was like, hey, there's free pizza. I might as well just go. You know, if I don't enjoy it, at least I get free pizza. Yay. And, and so I went there, and that was one of the best decisions I made in my life, was to go to that pizza party. Debbie taught me the rules of the game. Debbie Rosenberg, she taught me the rules of the game. And yeah, and then things took off from there. Yeah, so I, I'm really grateful for Civi. Because uh, I know that without Civi, I almost certainly would not have discovered Bridge. And even if I did, I probably wouldn't have the necessary support to allow me to enjoy the game right because that's one of the things about bridge in my opinion it's like it's, it's hard to get into it because the fun comes from when you understand it to the point where you understand what you don't know uh, or like mm-hmm. where, you, where you can really appreciate how difficult it is and and Civi was just there for me to like take me to the point where i could really start enjoying the game for what it is so did you you went back the next week or what uh what happened uh, <laughs> uh, the the city pizza parties are like a month apart. So I went to the I went to another one after after a month. Like, did you play? You put you okay, You went to the pizza party, learned the rules. Then what happened? I went to more pizza parties, and then Debbie started dragging me to play at, at club games. <laughs> well, I'm really thankful for what she did, for what for for what she does. And then uh, she told me about the Toronto National 2017 Toronto National. And so I, I went there, and by the way, uh, at Toronto, I, I watched a screening of Double Dummy, uh, and 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 so like, yeah, so like the Nationals really, really, really formed my identity as a bridge player, and, and I think I wrote about this in Bridge Winners article, but like, just just like you know, like what uh, Mojo said, like Morrison Jones said. In the in the like episode on the setting trick, he said like the there's magic at the nationals, uh, yeah. in that you're able to, like when you're surrounded by this by your people, right? You're you're surrounded by your community. You're surrounded by people with score she's talking in a language that only you and them can understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so magical. Like it's just so magical for us to like. I feel like I feed off the energy. I'm feeding off like everybody's passion for this game. And it's just such an amazing experience to be surrounded by people who think like me, who who love this game the way I do. And that just going to them, man, the nationals are they're such a great tournament. That's amazing. And it's not it's not like about for me, it's not necessarily about like how prestigious the events are necessarily, but just something about 
that in real life aspect that like these online nationals just lack. And okay, now I'm getting a bit political about online views, uh, real life bridge, but I think being able to play in real life bridge is what really hooked me hard. And so like for the Youth Bridge Association, I'm, I'm trying to still provide that same sense of community online virtually, which could be very hard. But yeah, I, because like I, I believe in the importance of developing a connection with, sorry, yeah, I, I don't know how to say this right now. So for listeners who want to support what you're doing with the Youth Bridge Association, what would be what would be your ask of them? If you could ask them to do one thing, would it be to donate money? Would it be to tell their friends or their children that, you know, about the opportunity? Like what, uh, what would be, if you could speak to all of our listeners, say, what's something that maybe they don't even know that they could help you with? Yeah, that's a good question, J-Mac. The Youth Bridge Association, Association is really an idea of, of youth bridge players giving back to the community by, by teaching other youth bridge players. So, so even if like they don't they donate money to our organization, right? Like, I mean, that's like that's not like the only way to help us out. If you just teach somebody bridge and you get them to come to our events, that's that'll be great. Like that that'll be that still means a lot. Arthur will probably really want me to say this, so I'm gonna say it. Like, uh, <laughs> we do we do heavily rely on donations for our funding to be able to provide prizes for our tournaments. And and there there is a lot of expenses to be had with like having a website and uh, premium Zoom and stuff like that. So donations are super helpful. If you're not in, in a steady uh, financial state, we need tournament directors to help direct our uh, our tournaments. And I'm, I'm very grateful to Aviv Shahath. Um, sorry if I mispronounced his name. Uh, for for him volunteering to be our tournament director, and also like in terms of what youth bridge play, youth bridge players can do, uh, like if they can just come and volunteer to be a teacher, that that means a lot. And and for them to help give back to the community by teaching youth bridge, youth bridge players themselves, that that's just something that that they could do and would mean a lot to me and to the community. Have you tried using Real Bridge for your sessions? We haven't thought about that yet, but like now that you mentioned it, we might we might do that because um, I've heard there were some good features about it. Yeah, we might do that. All right. Anything else? Ooh, final thoughts. <laughs> Who's better, you or Kalita? <laughs> you asked this question. <laughs> um, Kalita. Uh, Kalita. Maybe maybe in ten years, we'll see. Maybe, maybe he's yeah. a fish, man. He's a fish. He's a fish. <laughs> he, can't, he, he can't play. I stopped asking the question because his partner. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but but I, I mean, like what, what Mikal did, I don't think speaks on on like on the character of Kalida. Like I, I don't think what his partner did says anything about like the integrity of Kalida. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I mean, I just haven't been asking because, uh, because, because of the, I didn't want to bring him up, you know, because it's just, I mean, I, I appreciate that Michael, uh, you know, the confession that he did, you know, he, he did confess. Yeah. Apparently, there's a lot of people out there who did similar things who haven't. Yeah. Um, I guess the thing that I would say is to any listeners out there, it's just to not cheat, and and the reason why to not cheat is really because I, I did write Bridge Winners post about it. So, so go, go read my Bridge Winners post about about why to not cheat. <laughs> Are you wearing two sweaters? You're yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I get cold easily. <laughs> I see. Okay, two V necks on my man here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've never seen that before. I've never seen a double V-neck before. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, how's Bucky six thousand, my man? Is is that Andrew Chen? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually, I'm I'm not like um, that connected right now with the younger generation of city. Yeah. You know, so I'm not too sure, but I, I hope he's doing well and that and that he's proud of his success and that 
he continues to aim higher, you know, maybe the youngest Grand Life Master. How many uh, Master Points do you have? <laughs> oh, uh, it's so funny. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I ran now at 400. Like, I, I'm not Life Master yet, which is very, very funny. Like, I'm like 430 or something. And like, so Sibby, what Sibby does is like, we have a list of, we have like a pack of, of our Life Masters. And yeah. it's really funny how like all these younger generation Bruce players are, are are beating me in this race, even though I started a bit earlier. I guess that's because I don't play, I don't so much like play a lot of tournaments, more so like I, I try to make the most out of each tournament by asking a lot of questions uh, on the sessions that I play in. Is Kevster's on the Life Master plaque? Oh, I mean, he is definitely a Life Master, of course. And he probably was the first... I actually don't think he is on there because we started this like after Kevin has already became like kind of established player, right? Like, um, yeah, that's I, a cool plaque to have, though. I think. Yeah, I think the first player on there is actually Michael. Michael two. <laughs> Michael one. Does Michael does Michael one know that I call you Michael two? Uh, I don't think so. I, I don't even know if he still remembers this this show for now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Ron Carr? Ooh, uh, so Ron Carr was my initial city mentor. He got to the point where I, where I started sending like you know like ten emails a day of questions, <laughs> and, and I, I mean Ron Carr is amazing, but he's not. He, I mean he 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 has he has other things to do, right? And it's like yeah, like this is why I I just appreciate Michael Rosberg so much. He's like. I, I recognize how much of a superhuman effort he's done in being able to answer the barrage of questions I have. I, I, I do acknowledge all the time and effort he's put uh, into mentoring me. What kind of prizes do you have for this youth tournament? We have two different stratifications. In the lower stratification, we have, I believe, 40, 20, 10. So $40 to the first pair each, 20 to the second pair each, and then 10 to the first pair or third pair each. And for the upper stratification, we, we're doing 50 uh, for first, 30 for second, and 10, or 15 for first, or for third. And and for, for these top three, we're also giving out uh, one year uh, of British World subscription for free. And yeah, I like listeners, uh, like thank, thank you for donating to, to the British World Prize Fund and, and also to the YBA because we would not be able to do this without your support and your generous donations. How did you come up with the money amount? I just tried to thought of something that was like reasonable, right? Like we can't give out thousand dollars because that's insane. But like, yeah, like fifty dollars sounded like we we looked at our budget, we looked at how much we have, and we like, yeah, this this sounds reasonable. Yeah, it wasn't like science. We didn't use the algorithm to calculate the money amounts. You've got a you've got a sibling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I have an older sibling, uh, but unfortunately, none, nobody in my family plays blue. Well, you know, can't we? We can't all be the Chens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Andrew <laughs> Richard Chens. Oh my god, or, or the growth tax, or the <laughs> no, the growth tax only have three: Jory, Zach, and Adam. Nobody else plays. I don't think in the family. They, they don't have a fourth. They have to play three handed. Oh, the oh, Chens sorry. have a full table. Oh, you mean Steve Chen? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was thinking. Oh, sorry. When you said Chen, for some reason I was thinking of Richard Jen and Andrew Chen. Like no, Jen no, no. It's yeah. Bucky, Bucky six and three thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, <laughs> that must be very cool to be able to like have enough players to just a perfect amount of players for rich people. Oh, all right, man. I'm ready to sign this thing off to end this mother. Uh huh. Um, can I can I give myself a shout out? Okay. Yeah. Remember to follow me on Bridge Winners for updates on one, on the Youth Bridge Association <laughs> and, <laughs> and other interesting articles. <laughs> okay. We, when we started this, uh, just for everybody's uh, benefit, in Michael's research of himself, he has sixty five followers at the time of this recording. So let's see what we can do. Setting trick listeners, Michael Zoo 
He's outspoken. He's done his own in the well. He's uh, <laughs> he's uh, written articles about youth players are aggressive bidders. They love conventions. Maybe we'll get him to publish the full Michael Rosenberg email chain one of these days. Whether or not he has enough meat to do that, we don't know. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. I'm fortunate to to have you as our intern, and thank you for what you're doing for Youth Bridge. Michael, I'm really glad that what you're doing and, you know, thank you. Thank you as a, as a bridge player. Thank you for doing it. Yeah. Thank you too, John. Like, remember what I said about only doing things that I believe in, like when, when we were talking about community service, I'll let, I'll let you make the connections on, on why I'm also interning for the city trip. Mm. There you go, buddy. Yeah, that's right. So, so thank you, John, too, for, for everything you've done too. I see the sparkle in your eyes, my friend. All right. A biento. All right. Thank you. Bye. Michael estimated that about 60 kids have come through the YBA's programs. Currently, they have an intermediate and an advanced class that get approximately 12 and 18 students. They're considering a merger with Youth for Bridge, where our episode 34 guest, Al Bender, is one of the leading organizers. Michael and Al are talking about merging the two organizations. For the Grand Online Tournament, they had uh, 70 pairs in December. The reason they don't have any beginner classes currently is because they feel like the beginner, the supply of beginners has dried up. So what my call to action to you, Setting Trick listeners, would be let's let's do a beginner bridge player drive and get these kids, some, let's get them some students. So that's, uh, those are your marching orders. Email me, john at thesettingtrick.com, and we're going to organize this.